everybody. Welcome back to the podcast, My View on the View, where I make the views table relatable. I take the table dynamics and I relate those to our everyday lives. We got a lot to talk about. So come on in here. Let's get started. Come on. Well, hey, 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 everybody. We are back together. Thank y'all so much for coming back. I really appreciate all of y'all. Welcome to all the new listeners to My View on the View. There are thousands of you guys. And I will tell you, I am so grateful for you thinking that something here is valuable for you um, by just repeatedly coming back and making that decision to subscribe and follow. So guys, thanks so much. I really appreciate y'all. Listen, I want to encourage all of us um, to let someone in our life know that we appreciate them, especially if you are like me and you have really close friends who encourage you to be a better person, uh, ladies to be a better woman, all my guys listening to be a better man, um, encouraging us to make right choices. Because y'all know not everybody has that. Not everyone has friends. Number one, who will tell them the truth. And number two, who will encourage them to live a right life and to make right choices, right? And so I will tell y'all really quickly, I had a situation with a family member. I had done something um, from the goodness of my heart. And because I hadn't seen or talked to this person in many, many years, um, they assumed I had done this for a wrong reason, which was baffling to me. And, and so I was talking with a very close friend of mine about it. And I had not intended to apologize because I got word through another family member that they were upset. And I was like, what? I mean, when they told me what they thought, I was like, okay, why would anyone think that? You know, uh, only someone who doesn't really communicate with me would think that I did that for a bad reason. Right. So anyway, so I had resolved, I am not apologizing to them, which is what this family member was encouraging me to do. So I was talking with a, a close friend of mine who always gives me wonderful advice, very wise person. And they were like, you know what, you need to humble yourself and apologize. Even though you didn't do anything wrong, just explain to them what your thinking was when you took this particular action. And so although I was like going back and forth with the friend, I'm not going to do it. I ultimately thought about what they said and was like, you know what? I do need to humble myself, you know? And I did that and it had a wonderful result. And that was (laughs) attributed to my friend because if they hadn't encouraged me to do it, y'all, I wouldn't have. So having people in your life who will tell you what you don't want to hear is so important, okay? So if you've got that, please just give them a shout out today and appreciate them. Now, before we dive into what we're going to talk about today, I got a couple of things I want to just remind everyone of. First, don't forget before you leave today, hit the like button to let me know that you enjoy our time together. And if you're listening on another platform where you can give me, yes, a good old nasty clap, okay, do that. Give me a heart, follow, rate, comment, surprise, surprise, uh, subscribe, do all those things, all right? Now, listen, y'all know that our goal this year, at least my goal for our community, the My View on the View community this year, 20 2022 is to read more. And I was so glad when I heard Whoopi say this. I've been listening to lots of books. Because, you know, listen, y'all, let me tell you something. Our lives are pretty busy, especially those of you with children and those of you who are helping your kids out with the grandkids. Listen, it's busy. And so sometimes we don't have time to sit down with a book the way we used to. And so audiobooks are a great way to consume books of quality. And of course, you can get through them very quickly because on Audible, you can change the playback speed, which is wonderful. That's one of the tools on there that I use a lot. So a five hour book, I can cut it down to three and a half, depending on how fast I want to listen to it. So I want to help all of us with this goal by giving each and every one of you a free 30 day trial of Audible. If you're not already an Audible, uh, Uh, subscriber or participant. Check out the link. No matter where you're listening to my voice, it's in the description box. Okay. You can listen to whatever you want, not just for you, but choose books on there for your children. And also you can listen to as many as you want in those 30 days that you've got free. Okay. So having said that, now let's get into what I want to talk to you about. So guys, we have now gotten a second leak. Yes, y'all, a second leak from the New York Post over this weekend. Now, here's what it was about. If you will recall last year in 2021, we learned from Meghan McCain when she was going on all these shows promoting her audible book, Bad Republican, which by the way, you can listen to that one for free if you want to during those 30 days. But she was talking to all these reporters. And one of the things that she kept telling them is right before she left the show, she gave the view executives a list of women who she would recommend they reach out to 
to chemistry test to replace her. But when the reporters would ask her who was on that list, she would never elaborate. Well, y'all, y'all know what happened. Part of the leak that came out over the weekend in the New York Post article was that list. And you know what, guys? I don't have no problem telling you guys this. When I saw these four names, I was like, Who this woman? I was like, who this woman? <laughs> yeah, shout out to Color Purple. I was, I never heard of any of these girls before, which, you know, really is not surprising because I don't watch any, I don't watch any partisan news shows, guys. Not right, not left, not center. None of it appeals to me. I only watch, read, listen to nonpartisan news. And a lot of these people who are really popular, like some of these girls we're about to talk about, they don't appear on these programs I watch. And so I just don't know who they are. But I'm sure a lot of you will know these names as we go through them. I have something for you. We're going to actually listen to a clip of each woman. We're going to listen to, you know, some viewpoint she has on one of the trending topics, just so we can get an idea of exactly kind of what, you know, where this person is coming from. And I will tell you guys, brace yourself, because some of the things, you know, uh, that are being said, particularly about the vaccines, I find offensive. But you know what? It is what it is. OK, so let's go through the list of names. Now, I will say this. I don't know if the list was any in any particular art order or if it was just she just gave him the list. OK, but I'm giving the names to you the exact way they appeared in the New York Post article. OK, so the first woman is Liz Wheeler. Liz is 32. And this is just a sample of what Liz has to say. I report the facts, the truth and the science about their COVID vaccine, which itself is a steaming pile of garbage. That's not my opinion. That's what the science says. Yet the main Mainstream media, the Democrats, public health officials, and of course, Pfizer themselves pretend it's perfectly safe when it's not, and that it's effective, which likewise, it is not. Then guys, there's a young lady by the name of Allie Beth Stuckey. Now, Allie is 29, and she's the host of Blaze TV's Relatable. And this is just a sample of Allie. Global, globalization, in, in some ways, these global corporations are going to be who are, you know, ruling over us in the vision of the World Economic Forum after the Great Reset and resisting that by relying on local community, localization, um, and doing everything really that a lot of the left-wing elites don't want people to do. Uh, rely on your family, rely on your church, come together as a community, um, care about things like individual liberty and freedom and all of these things that really stand opposed to what they're trying to do. And really, it's difficult in the age of COVID, which again, like you said, is playing right into their hands. And I'm, I'm just wondering again, just because so many people are confused about this stuff and my husband and I we find ourselves talking about this maybe it doesn't have anything to do with the great reset although I've heard you say before that a lot of things if not everything that kind of happens somehow plays into what's going on but you see so much COVID policy that just doesn't make sense and not just when it comes to the government but also also with hospitals like for example there's news coming out of California it's happening in ev probably in every state because I've gotten so many messages from people saying that this is happening even in conservative states this is happening in Canada as we know there are a lot of nurses healthcare workers that got fired uh, because they refused to get the vaccine for a variety of reasons now we keep hearing that the hospitals are strained not necessarily because of COVID patients but because they are short staffed they've been short staffed for a long time and yet they fired hundreds of healthcare workers at each hospital because of this and now the news is that COVID positive healthcare workers are being asked to come into work as long as they have, quote, mild symptoms. Then, guys, there's a lady by the name of Lauren Chen. She's 27. Uh, so, so far, everybody's a millennial. And she's formerly known as the Roaming Millennial. And she's a Canadian YouTuber, uh, blogger. And she's also a former Blaze TV host. So, let's listen to just a sample of Lauren. 
Hey guys, welcome back to the show and thank you so much for tuning in. We often hear people talk about getting religion out of politics, but today we will be discussing getting politics out of religion. And I know not all of our viewers are Christian or maybe even religious at all, so you might be thinking, mm, does this really concern me? Is this something I need to worry about? But if you are someone who is watching the encroachment of cultural Marxism into every single aspect of our society and thinking, mm, this is not a good thing, then religion is definitely part of that equation. The line between religion and politics is kind of a tricky one, and in some ways, yes, absolutely, your religious views will inform your politics. Take, for example, the issue of human life. If you have a conviction that human life, no matter how young or old, is precious and valuable, then politically speaking, you are probably not going to support something like euthanasia or abortion. And actually, when it comes to those types of situations where the outcome is literally about life or death, or similarly, when the issue is war and maybe you're conscious conscientious objector, like a Quaker, I would even say that it's not necessarily about politics, it's actually just about morality. In general, though, when it comes to issues like corporate tax structures or trade agreements, no, I don't think most religions have an explicit policy position that their adherents have to believe in. The reason why I bring all of this up is because recently Liam and I completed a marriage preparation course that is required for getting married in the Catholic Church. And for those of you who aren't aware, by the way, Liam is Catholic, but I and Baptist, and very decidedly not Catholic. And it's not that I'm anti-Catholic, so please don't think that. I know a lot of Catholics out there are firm, committed Christians, and I really respect them for that. It's just that I firmly, in my core, believe the five solas of the Protestant Reformation. And there are just quite a few things about the Catholic religion that I cannot reconcile with what I see in the Bible. So that's why I'm not Catholic, but obviously I don't find Catholicism enough of a problem that I, I wouldn't want to marry one or that I don't even think of Catholics as Christians, which I know to be frank, some Protestants do believe. Honestly, Liam is very, very supportive of my faith, which I appreciate so much. So when it came to our actual marriage ceremony, he expressed to me how it was important to him to get married in the Catholic Church. And you know what? I decided that if getting married in the Catholic Church was that important to him and his family, then that's something that we as a new family would do. The marriage preparation course that that wedding required, however, is exactly what inspired this episode. And I'm going to be getting into exactly what upset me so much. And then finally on the list, uh, allegedly there is a lady by the name, who's on the list rather, her name is Kelsey Harkness. Uh, she's now gotten married. So I don't think she's going by Harkness anymore. Uh, at least when I looked on her Twitter page. And honestly, guys, I can't remember what her last name is. But Kelsey is uh, 31. She's a political analyst for... Uh, IWF, which is the Independent Women's Forum. And she's also a contributing writer for The Federalist. And what we all know uh, belongs to D Ben Dominic, Megan McCain's husband. So let's listen to a small clip of, uh, of Kelsey, for those of you like me, who are like, who does woman? Uh, Kelsey Harkness. Kelsey, good morning to you. Great to be here. Why the rush to judgment? I think the answer to that question is very simple. Uh, many members of the press have hated Donald Trump from the start since he decided to run for president. And I don't say that lightly, but I think since he decided to run for president, um, members of the media have been on a mission to prove themselves right. And in the process, they've started to believe their own fake news. And what I think all the media needs to realize right now, especially in light of what happened this weekend, is that fake news has real consequences. Just imagine if there were no hour, two hour long videos that could exonerate uh, these high school boys boys, right. uh, their lives could be ruined. And imagine if the special counsel didn't come out and make this statement. I imagine many members of Congress and the media would be pushing still to impeach President right. Trump. Fake news has consequences. Yeah. And so guys, you know, none of these ladies on this list have chemistry tested yet. 
Although if you were with me on the Liz Wheeler podcast where I specifically spoke about her, then you know the deal that's happening over there with her. And listen, if you didn't hear that podcast, just scroll where you're listening uh, to me and you will see that podcast there. Her name is in the title. So listen, it may be, well, maybe, it's, may, maybe isn't the word to say because it is. This is very premature for me to say and, and you'll let me know what you think about these ladies. But as I was researching each of them, I was like, I can't see in either of these girls working for, you know, working with this particular group of women. And as we've talked about a million times, when I say that, I am not talking about their views. I'm talking about their personality. I'm talking about their mannerisms, uh, because when I was pulling the clips to put into the podcast, of course, these were videos of these girls and I was watching them and I was like, OK, no, because one of the things that the executive producer, Brian Teta, has told the world that they are looking for is this. The woman has to have chemistry with the rest of the group. And although we don't know Whoopi, Joy, Sarah, Sonny and Anna personally, we get to see various facets of their personality on the show. Um, but, you know, so it's like this group of women are pretty solidified uh, as a group on the show and also behind the scenes, their friends. Uh, it's particularly Anna, Sunny, and Joy are really, really close friends and have traveled together a lot. And so I will just tell you guys, I couldn't see any of these four, four girls their personalities meshing with these ladies' personalities. But again, I know that's pre- premature. We haven't seen either of them chemistry tests. Maybe, you know, it would be totally different, you know, if I were to see them chemistry tests. But right now, my opinion is I couldn't see them fitting. Okay, so guys, listen, let me just sum up everything by saying this. If you are familiar with any of these girls, let us know if you're listening where you can make a comment. And please let all of us know, not just me, because remember, there are everybody's seeing your comment, not just me, you know, and I may or might not, may not see it depending on if I have time to kind of go in the comment section on any particular day that a podcast becomes live to you guys. I will just tell you guys, I can't wait to hear what y'all have to say. Cause listen, let me tell y'all something else too. These millennials, all these girls are millennials. Okay. Millennials are, are, you know, their views of the vaccines and the mandates, they are very different than these women. Uh, view women's views and also you know a lot of these millennials they're just not like we were when we were coming up y'all um, because most of us here are women and most of us are 40 and over I will just say that when I was growing up although I don't have a personality type that's easily influenced now you can influence me if what I think you're telling me is already is something I was either already going to do or I was thinking of doing or I was just putting it off or if I, I feel in my spirit that what you're saying to me is the right thing, then yeah, I could be influenced. But generally, I am just, you know, I'm just not a follow the crowd kind of person. I'm not a a group type thinker. Like everybody thinks this. No, I'm going to look at the stuff myself and I'll, I'll tell you what I think. That's just my personality. That's how God made me. So even though I have this kind of personality, though, growing up, (laughs) If my elders said anything, honey, we just went along with it. Okay. We didn't back talk because we might get popped in the mouth, you know? Um, but I'm just like, I, these girls from the stuff I'm seeing on here, they would, the disrespect towards joy would be very real with some of these girls. Mm-hmm. Cause I can't, I didn't see. And again, I know, again, I don't know them, but I don't, I didn't see where there would be any healthy boundaries that when you're speaking to your elder, would be a 66 now, you should have a certain level of respect and a tone of respect. And like, I just didn't get that. I got that these girls are like, listen, I'm an independent woman and I'm going to tell you what I have to say. And I don't give a crap what your life experience is. I don't care if you have lived over seven decades who you think you're like, I don't know. I just thought, I don't know how this is going to work. But anyway, you guys who know them and know them much and are familiar with them much better than I am, but much better rather than I am, please let us all know what you think about this. Now, don't forget on your way out, if you enjoyed the podcast, so let us, let me know that by hitting the like button, give me a hand clap, a heart, a thumbs up on the platform you're listening to the podcast, rate, follow, comment, share, and subscribe. And so guys, this is my view on The View, a podcast all about ABC's The View, where I make The View's table relatable. Enjoy your day, guys. I'll talk to you later. Bye. My friend, ain't no place to hide, ain't no one to run to. Here we go, here we go again. Call my bluff and you wanna be my friend 
I'm the one you ride. I'm